All right. So some of you asked for a Brock Lesnar fighter showcase. You know, I can't really say that nobody asked for this one because somebody did. A bunch of you actually did. So here you go. Brock Lesnar. We're going to do it. We are going to do it. You guys asked for Brock um, when I used uh, Tyson Fury. That's <laughs> when I used Tyson Fury. Some of you guys were like, oh, that's right. There's Brock Lesnar in the game. Because I, I had mentioned that there's some fighters that were added to the game that a lot of people were excited for when they were added. But then people just stopped using them. Brock Lesnar was one of them. Tyson Fury, of course. Um, Isaac Frost, another one. Anthony jo Anthony Joshua, another one. So, probably gonna run around and just just use some of these fighters again. So we've done Tyson Fury. Probably we're, just, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do Br Brock for this one, and then we're gonna take a look at Isaac Frost. Maybe. Well, oh, I have used Frost recently, so. Oh, head kick. I've used Frost recently, so I don't know if I'll use Frost again. But Anthony Joshua is definitely someone that we got to... We got to get that man a check again. We got to check him out again. Come here. Oh, it's a takedown, buddy. Boom. There you go. Posture, posture, posture. It is about 1 a.m. right now. <laughs> my wife and kids are... They're not home. They're at my... My mother-in-law's, her parents. So I've got like the whole entire weekend to to focus on work and jujitsu. So it's pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. It's it's like it's weird. Like I I get two different. Okay. I already know how this is going to go. Like, the, I'm, this this ground game I'm trying to do right now, I'm not going to be... Yeah, I'm not going to be very dominant. Just because, like, I'm just not in the mood to try hard right now. So, I'm just going to play on autopilot. And whatever happens, happens. I might get my eyes beat. But it's okay. He swayed that one. But um, I was saying, like, not having my wife and kids here, like, I always hate it. But I love it also for a different reason because, you know, they're loud. Um, not my wife. She's she's not loud at all. My kids, they're loud as fuck. Dave and Ava and Coco Melon constantly on, you know. Um, well, not constantly, just, I just hear it every day, so now it just feels like, you know, when you hear the same shit, like, day in and day out, after a while, it's just like, oh my god, I'm being waterboarded with this. Um, so yeah, I don't go anywhere besides, uh, jujitsu, pretty much, I go to jujitsu, I come home, I hang out at home with the, with the wife, with the kids, and then I, I work on YouTube. That's pretty much what my schedule is like. Jiu-Jitsu, come home, hang out with the kids, work. Um, but sometimes I don't really get to work as much as I know that I need to. Or as, uh, as hard as I know that I need to. Because like this is a convenience thing. It's like, okay, it's like the kids, both of them are... And they both have like two different sleeping schedules at this point so like okay one of them is asleep hey can you can you try to keep this one quiet while i i record real quick you know it's like especially oh it's so bad it went like is this a weight class i'm really trying to get and it's like oh my god and the kids are losing their minds and i'm like please can you just keep him quiet for a little bit while i record oh he's up um on your back again sir if you don't mind but we make it work. We really do. And you guys have said that you don't really mind hearing them in the background. But we make it work. It's just like moments like this when they're not home. A, the house just ends up sounding dead quiet. And that's 
annoying too. It's like, <laughs> like, ah, uh, like I love hearing them. I do. And then the, you know, when I need to work, it's like ah, uh, can they be quiet? And then when they're not here, it's like, damn, where are my goddamn kids, man? I want them back. <laughs> such a such a weird thing being a dad, man. It's just such a weird, weird thing. Like right now, 1 a.m. and nope, no sir. I might try to choke this dude out. Let me see. Where is he gonna go? Ah, guessed wrong. Nope. Back mount. He's gonna give me the back again. All right, let's see if we can. No, see if we can, if we can choke him out a little bit. See if we can choke him out. If I don't have it, I'll cancel it. Eh, it's not there. It ain't there. It is not there. Yeah, man. Like, they'll be back Monday. Go, uh, go pick them back up Monday. And uh, nope. And then things will be back to normal. It's just like it's like it's so like 1 a.m. right now. Once I'm done with this, and I edit the video, like I'm gonna have to go lay down. And oh my god, like usually like you know, I'm, my wife is right there and laying down, and she's not there. There's just a weird lonely feeling that comes over me. It just happens all the time. Like those of you that are married, you know what I'm talking about. Oh ho! Either way. Like I I couldn't be more blessed, honestly. When I when I sit down, it's usually Slam that boy. Boom! It's usually moments like this when they're not home that I, I have time to like really reflect. You know? It's like you, you, you really just sit down and you think about like, man, like I'm 30 years old and I'm already, I'm already in a place like I, at a stage in my life that I did not think I would get to at this point. You know what I mean? It's like, it's just feel blessed, man. Feel blessed. I feel blessed. My daughters are growing, man. Ugh, I cannot. I can't tell you how just honored I feel, man. Like, damn, bro, I'm raising kids. That's wow. Really? You're not gonna give it to me? You're not gonna give it to me, boy? Anyways, Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Just spent half of the fucking showcase talking about something completely unrelated. I hope you guys don't mind. If you don't mind me rambling sometimes. But it's late. This is generally when introspective Henry starts to freaking come out. But yeah, Brock in this game, uh, it's hit or miss with me with Brock, honestly. Sometimes I'm a world beater with Brock Lesnar. Other times I just get my ass fucking whooped. It just it depends on what my opponent is doing. You know, if I have an opponent that's just ridiculously good and they refuse to get taken down, it's like it can get bad, man. It can get really, really bad because Brock Lesnar's striking in this game is nothing to be really desired. I mean, he's powerful for sure, but... I like that right hook. Yes! That beautiful knee. That beautiful knee tap. That beautiful knee tap. That, that, that's actually my one of my favorite takedowns to hit. Probably my favorite takedown to hit um, in jiu-jitsu. Like, I love takedowns. 
Like my 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 thing with takedowns in jujitsu right now is like I look at I look at a few things. Um, level change, like how much do I need to level change? If I can get the opponent down without requiring me to level change too much, that's I will mostly favor it. Um, two, um, how much am I giving my back? Mm -hmm. How much how much back exposure? Am I giving to my opponent while I try to perform a takedown? Which is why like some of the some of the judo throws don't appeal to me. You know? Like the like the Seonage. Seonage, Ipon Seonage, drop Seonage. All of these like those throws you you show your I mean you you present your back significantly. And that it, it requires full commitment. You miss it. There's your back. They're taking your back 100%. Um, and, you know the 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 Tayotoshi, You know, you're giving you're giving your back. I don't really like those. You know, I really don't. It's uh. You know, but I love ankle picks, for example. I really love ankle picks. Like, yeah, you know, with, with, with ankle picks, you're you're definitely dropping, but it's not like like dropping into a into a low single or dropping it even dropping into a single leg. I I love I, I just I love how safe how safe it is. You know, you, you miss a low, uh, you miss an ankle pick, for example. Like you're not, you it's not your neck, it's not your back. You can just stand right back up, you know, the, the risks are not too grave, you know, you, you shoot a double leg on somebody, rocked, you shoot a double leg on somebody and they sprawl heavy, that's body weight collapsing on you with your arms stretched out, rocked again, so bad on, on the shoulders, you know, a single leg, you know, if you, if you, if you shoot it properly, I, like, yeah, you can keep your neck safe, safe but if you make the mistake, they can catch you, you know, your neck can be caught with a freaking guillotine. Um, sit him down, this should be it boys, this should be it. That's it, beautiful. Anyways, I, I, I feel like I covered so many different topics in this one showcase, but my brain is in ramble mode right now, so like I said, my apologies boys. There's probably going to be more ramblings to to do uh, that I'm going to do. Uh, we'll probably get one more fight. I don't really want to spend too much time using this character. The weight classes are about to be over anyway. So I'm going to do one more fight. Try to get a really good one. One last one. And uh, and then we'll call it we'll call it a night. So Let's get it, boys. Let's get it. All right, we are facing Stipe Miocic, and uh, I think this is going to be it. I'm gonna call it a day on this one. Try to get a try to get a good match here. Now, Brock Lesnar was a very interesting character in the heavyweight division in the UFC. Man, he came in larger than life, exactly what you would expect your heavyweight champion to look like. You know. For a while there, the heavyweight champion in the UFC was not was not looking the part, man. It was just not looking the part on your back, sir. You know, you got DC, which again, I'm not I'm not saying that you that you have to be a big superhero hulk of a man to be a good heavyweight fighter. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just I'm saying it's in terms of what's more marketable. It's definitely better for you heavyweight champion to look the part, you know, big, giant, ripped, shredded. Like Francis Ngannou, for example, that's a heavyweight champion that you can, you can look at and say, "Aye, right, that's a heavyweight champion." You know what I mean? Brock was one of those guys, freaking giant. Nope. I think Junior Dos Santos wa was was. Uh, he was a good figure as well for the heavyweight division. Cain Velasquez, not so much. 
Um, but in terms of who who was the who's the heavyweight champion in the in the UFC? Stipe, I think Stipe was somewhere in the middle. Stipe is a giant human being himself, but like you know, he's not exactly shredded and ripped like Ngannou or massive like Brock Lesnar. Mm-hmm. But yeah, in terms of like what heavyweight div what heavyweight champion do I think had the potential to He got it. He freaking got that. I wonder if he's gonna actually try to grapple me or is he gonna try to get back up to his feet? Uh oh. That man says my turn. That man said my turn. I I guess I guess he's not afraid of my grappling whatsoever. Wow. Posture up. <laughs> nice one. I thought he was going to posture up. Damn. I cannot believe I let him actually get that. Nope. In terms of what, 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 what heavyweight champion in the past do I think had the potential to, to, I mean, to be like the John Jones of the heavyweight division. I'm talking 10, 11, 12 title defenses. Cain Velasquez. Cain Velasquez. Of course, Cain, you know, he definitely lost to JDS. Uh, he... He, uh, you know, he lost to Fabricio Verdum. Um, but I think if it wasn't for the injuries, you know, just just injury after injury. I mean, Kane's career in the UFC is just such a huge shame, bro. Like, it really is. He has so much potential, man. But then the injuries, just getting injured over and over again. I think if those injuries didn't happen, Kane had the potential to really be like the John Jones of the heavyweight division where literally nobody was going to beat him. He had that style, man. You know, the wrestling, the cardio. He just had something no other heavyweight could really contend with. No other heavyweight could challenge him with. That fucking cardio, bro. He would push these guys and break them. Absolutely break them. And then DC, of course, training with Kane for so long, followed suit. I mean, DC, his style and Kane's just, they just mirrored each other. They really, they really, really mirrored each other the way they fought. DC, of course, being the much better wrestler. On your back. You know what 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 Cain Velasquez was for DC is um not just like a great training partner in terms of iron like iron sharpening iron it, it was more cuz it's something that I'm realizing right now in the gym as I train especially if I'm getting ready for a competition like a big reason why you need those really hard rolls and you need that one guy that can really push you especially someone that's like like around your size nice bro that was actually really good kazushi to a sweep beautiful like it's it's one thing if he's gonna posture <laughs> it's one thing if like you're rolling with someone that's much bigger than you and like you just know, okay, like, a big part of why I'm losing right now is because this guy is just so much bigger and it's not, I'm not even, it's not like I'm going to run into someone this size. But if you have somebody around your size, right, and you know, okay, when I compete, I'm most likely going to run into someone like this, around this size, and they can give you really, really good work. Um, it's a good gauge for where you are, you know, got him. 
if you go out there while you're training with them and you're consistently keeping up and you're doing a good job and even though it's hard you're able to not succumb to the pressure that they're giving you and maybe you you even start to beat them and you're getting the better of them in training it's it's a confidence boost it's like okay like man it's it's like man there's no way i'm gonna run into anybody out there that's gonna give me as hard as a training as this guy you know and that's something that dc had you know he's going into fight i mean like dc going into fight anthony rumble johnson it's like he's thinking like yeah okay Rumble is not, he's, there's no way he's going to give me the sort of fight that Cain Velasquez gives me every day in the gym. It's a confidence boost, man. Rocked. And I think that's what DC was thinking with John Jones, and I was like, that first fight. So, I'm going to tell you guys, just, let me talk about this real quick. You notice how I've just switched things up completely right now? Oh boy. It's in the book I'm writing. Sometimes an abrupt switch in strategy is a very good way to shock your opponent and actually beat him. First round, I was slowly being passive against this guy and taking him down, but now I'm going full on forward aggression with striking and I guarantee he's thinking what the hell is going on right now this is what I've been able to do right now man like these things that I that I naturally do being able to identify them put them in the words and the fight is over beautiful yeah and he's gone that's okay I think that's been the hardest part about like writing down these concepts is like going back watching my matches and, and trying to identify like what i'm doing okay so this is this is what i'm thinking as i'm doing this trying to bring subconscious knowledge to a conscious level so that i can then teach it and that has been a very interesting process it really has been like trying to trying to write a book and and do all this it's been a very very interesting process um but yeah, I feel like we were all over the place with this fighter showcase and we barely actually talked about Brock. I'm sorry about that. I do hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, go right ahead and, uh, and leave a like. It always helps out the channel. And uh, I'm going to go try and get some sleep. Hopefully, hopefully, I'll actually be able to sleep. But yeah, that's it. Love you guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out. Have a good one.